Okay, so this is part one of my teardown guides. This is going to focus on the basics, some hints and tips about how to get started in the game and to kind of get a head start. When you load into campaign, you load into this area. This building is is like your um, your base, and you can explore, use different vehicles, and you can use the tools that you've unlocked to practice with them and find out how things work. This computer in the corner here is where you get your missions from. Missions are based around these locations and each location will have a whole range of missions as you unlock them. Your level that's on the top left, these this helps you to unlock new tools and you do that by completing objectives and optional objectives. The tools that you unlock, you'll ultimately end up with all of these, at least in part one, and they can also be upgraded using money. Money, I'll show you where you can find it in missions. You also sometimes get it as rewards at the end when you return back to your base. Now, these objectives that you get for each location, you have to do it in one shot. So if you've got the required objectives and the optional objectives, you have to come up with a path that will allow you to get all of those objectives in one go. And that's the basics of the game. So you blow things up and you try to get from your starting position, collect all of the things, blow all the things up, whatever it is you might have to do. In this one, you've got to put cars in water and then return to your escape vehicle. And the timer is always set at one minute and that's the amount of time you have allocated to get that objective done. This screen here is the map and the map is updated in real time and you can see a location of all the objectives and begin to kind of mentally plan your route for how you're gonna get to each one. But one of the first things that you do want to do in, when you load in at first is to kind of walk the route and go to each objective and see what awaits you. But we'll do a little bit more on that in my second video when we look at the strategy for how to plan out a heist. I'm just going to point out here how you can see the map in real time. So any destruction that you've done uh, using this spray cam, which we'll come to in a moment with the tools guide, all shows up in real time on the map. So you can see the, the destruction you've caused and you can see the paths that you're going to choose and you can use that to help you to plan things out and remember where you're going. Now this is one example of what an objective might look like. We've got a car attached to an alarm there and those that red cable once torn will set the alarm off you can quick save in this game you get one quick save that you have to keep saving over and then a quick load if you want to go back you can restart the mission after you quit out of a mission you will lose all progress so you'll have to do it all again here i've triggered the alarm so i've now got one minute to get all of the rest of the cars into some water and back to my base uh, back to the van there are other things that you can find in the map as well. I've taken the majority of the things like that you can collect, but each map will have hidden valuables that when you find them by destroying the map, you can get money for. It's worth going through a map the first time you unlock it and destroying as much of it as you can and trying to find all of these things. And don't forget as well, you don't have to blow everything up. You can just physically move things out of the way, which creates less mess. Okay, let's take a look at the tools. So all, all of these represent the tools you can unlock over the game. You unlock them by completing additional objectives and making progress. So the more objectives you do in each mission, the more tools you'll unlock. The tools themselves can all be upgraded. I've upgraded everything, but you use the money you find in the map to upgrade those. And I'll try and point out some that are worth upgrading quickly. This is the sledge that you start with. It has no upgrades and it is useful for breaking wood and glass it won't really do anything else so uh, you use it to save ammunition save uh, like fuel or anything with your other tools and just to break smaller things down it won't work at all on metal so you'd need a different tool the spray can is used for marking locations and for plotting routes around it's really really useful as i said on the map so you can see where you're going also if you spray it on a surface um, it will show up on the other side so you can spray it on the floor of a building and then go outside underneath the building and you can see that that was the spot you intended to blow up or whatever now um, the fire extinguisher is really useful for basically putting out fires it doesn't have any other use that i've found yet um, the closer you are generally the better but this this foam or spray whatever it is will, will work from quite a distance um, if there's anything in the way though it can sometimes block it 
Now the blowtorch is really useful for cutting through metals. Nearly every single metal that you see in the game it will cut through. There's only a few like the forklift which is part of a chassis that you can't break. Really good at cutting through gates without making a lot of mess and you can be quite smart with how you cut um, because the physics the, the physical properties is basically if an object has got no support around it it'll just collapse like these bars are so you can use it to chop your way through things quite easily you can also use it to customize vehicles like for example at the back of the crane if we chop a little bit into this it doesn't do very much damage but it lets us jump on top of the crane really easily you can also chop bits off cars to make it easier to fit cars in places or reduce it down to a chassis if you want to and because of the way the game works that will have a lower mass and so you'll be able to carry it um, the shotgun will blow up any surface that's destructible and as I said 99 plus percent of the surfaces in the game are destructible and the shotgun is really really versatile. I would recommend upgrading this and the ammunition and the damage for that as soon as possible and I forgot to mention the blowtorch you also want to make sure you upgrade the fuel slightly so you've got enough. So the shotgun will blow through pretty much everything and does a reasonably large amount of damage and is really really useful for if you're tearing through a map and you can't be bothered to open doors or you meet a locked door and you haven't got the uh, glitch um, that I assume that will get patched out at some point um, but I'll show you that uh, in a later video. Planks I've got a separate video on so we'll just quickly look at these. They can be used primarily to build ramps, to build ledges and to connect two objects together by connecting one plank to uh, whatever it is and then to the other object it will actually attach it like a rope. Pipe bombs you'll use more in the start of the game and probably not that much later on. You can throw them very rapidly so you can chuck a whole load out like this and they do a moderate amount of damage, they're very imprecise, they can get flung around, they do set fires. I pretty much use them for clearing grass from areas because uh, it makes cars drive a little bit better without having the grass in the way. As you can see it's gone down to the to the bare ground there. Um, but that's pretty much it for pipe bombs. Early in the game you use them a lot, later on maybe not so much. The gun is one that I would recommend upgrading later on in the game. It's I managed to play through without upgrading it once. It's like a really precise shotgun. It does less damage and you can destroy things from range so you can kind of set up like traps or things to collapse when you when you shoot them at distance. The bombs, when you do unlock them, it takes a little bit of time to unlock. They're really, really useful. They do a massive amount of damage. They're very precise to wherever you've placed them. You can place a whole number of them at the same time and they will cause a lot of destruction. They're also useful that, as you can see, like this wall's kind of crumbled in a way. You can put a couple more bombs down to pretty much destroy the debris itself and make the area nice and clear. So um, they're bombs, they work how you'd expect. I'd recommend upgrading the amount and the damage of these as, as, as soon as you can. They're really, really useful. The last one that you unlock is pretty much just a, a bomb that you can fire. It's the, the rocket launcher, so you can have the exact same effect as the bombs, but you can do it from a distance. So it saves you a little bit of time and it also gets you a bit more ammunition. Okay, let's take a look at the heavy vehicles next. So I've pretty much put every single one into this map, uh, every single type, and you can do the same and have a bit of a practice with how they work. Mainly you're going to be using these large vehicles for destroying things. Uh, the crane is very specific, but most of these you're just going to be using them to wreck stuff. There's a couple of quirks of how they work um, and how you will be able to do that a little bit better. Uh, in any vehicle, the left and right mouse button will like do whatever its action is, so lift the forklift up, lift the crane up. Um, there's also tow trucks, you can drop the back on the tow trucks using that button, so don't forget. Um, this forklift we'll have a look at first is kind of useful for creating ramps and small holes in, in the buildings. It's not one of the most effective ones that just like steamrolling through a wall um, but as I'll show you here you can get the prongs to go through. They are pretty tough and resilient and they don't can't contribute to the overall vehicle condition being dropped. You probably won't need to do things like this um, destroying the walls with the vehicles later on in the game when you've got more bombs but at the start it's going to be really useful and you can also use the vehicles like size and forklifts and so on to lift stuff up and to use with planks. The bulldozer, the front of the bulldozer is kind of not that effective. It 
as you can see here, you kind of smack into the building and then you don't go through because the bulldozer's got very little like torque, it seems. Um, and also the, the the like the shovel gets damaged really, really easily. What I've found with this one is it's quite effective to just reverse it into buildings. It certainly does a lot more damage and it continues to go through. It must be just a quirk of how it's designed. But this one's not hugely useful um, other than just clearing through fences and breaking uh, initial entryways into walls. One of the most useful vehicles is the crane. Um, the crane arm can be controlled with the left and right mouse button or whatever control scheme you're using. It's actually usable as a real crane, um, which I didn't expect at first, <laughs> if I'm honest, but tap the space bar or whatever button it is and you'll be able to connect things to the arm and you can use that to transport objectives around, to lift things up. But secondly, if you don't need the crane for a meat like lifting, you can use the arm to pretty much rip through any surface like it's tissue paper. I don't know if it will be patched out, I don't know if it's supposed to behave like this, but it must be a quirk of how the physics engine works because it doesn't seem to like have any resistance whatsoever when you smash the crane arm through. So as you can see here, it's just kind of pushing its way through the wall as if they're not even there. Uh, it's really, really useful for clearing large sections of the map because of that. Um, it can take damage and snap off, but generally the crane arm will last a very long time and you'll be able to do a lot of damage and you can also use it as a ramp to jump up. The digger can be used as a secondary crane. You can connect planks to the end of it and use that to pick things up um, with the planks as a rope. The arm is also really, really effective at smashing stuff up, as you can see. And of course, you can lift it up, you can take a lot of the wall down. The dump truck has a lot of torque, so it's very useful for dragging things. It's not so useful for driving through doors, sorry, walls. And also, it's very easy to turn over once you lift the, um, once you lift the back up. Now the light vehicles um, are kind of broadly in these classes, so the Jeep is excellent, the race cars are very good, this red car to the right is pretty much a workhorse car. Uh, I'm taking the front bumper off these cars here just because sometimes you can clip them on grass and so on, it makes them a lot easier to drive. So as I was saying, this red one comes in a variety of flavours and is your workhorse, it's a medium quality. These three are just rubbish and they're pretty much just to save you a bit of time if you want to walk somewhere i wouldn't use them for any getaway purposes unless you can um unless you've got no option this blue car just for example very slow acceleration and also really struggles on grass and has like the no steering ability it just seems to understeer everywhere the pink cars are very very or whatever color they might be are very very tail happy so they can be quite difficult to drive the race cars are really useful as getaway vehicles or covering loads of ground as part of the strategies we'll look at in later videos. Um, and they're pretty much the god tier of cars. The Jeep as well has a very high acceleration, obviously not as high, but it can drive across grass surfaces very well um, and it can take a lot of damage. Just be careful that you don't flip it over because they're quite easy to just like flip or bounce. Boats, we're not going to do every boat in detail because the boat's a boat. Um, this one's a speed boat, which is one of the most useful ones. It kind of drifts instead of turning, so you have to be careful of that. Some of the smaller boats aren't very useful at all, even for towing, because they just don't have enough power. Um, anything up from like this one will be really useful, and they're also like little mini yacht ones that are quite useful for transporting and towing stuff. If the boat takes damage, it can essentially sink. Um, this seems pretty tough here, I'm not sure why I'm getting away with doing that much damage to it, but you have to be very careful when you're putting quick saves in that if you accidentally clip the bottom of something or you turn in a corner, you might have essentially punctured your boat and then you can be in uh, a bit of a sticky situation, especially if you spent a lot of time planning a mission. This boat just doesn't seem to want to die for some reason. Now the other one that I want to just point out is the big towboat. These are really, really useful for transporting a lot of things. Sometimes they might even have an objective on like this one, but you can use them to transport a lot of things around um, and they can also be used to like bridge gaps, but we'll, we'll look at those in the intermediate video. I wanted to do a little bit on fire just uh, pretty much to finish up. 
fire spreads really quickly in the game you have to be careful when you've done any like, exploded anything or you've like burnt through anything that you haven't accidentally set a fire you'll be able to hear it very easily um, but it spreads propagates really quickly and you'll get a fire alert so just be careful when you finish taking things down in an area that there's no fire because once you've gone away from that area um, the fire could have spread quite dramatically and this is why I don't recommend you use the blowtorch to cut anything uh, anything like wood or flammable because each one will propagate its own fire out so essentially that first fire that I set this is now going to grow four times as fast and as I've already mentioned just to point out if you blow anything up with any form of explosive in the game you have a chance of setting a fire on any flammable surfaces and it will look just like that you won't really notice it at first but you might hear it and then before you know it that could be quite overwhelming the last bit I wanted to point out was the graphics. Now, if you're running this on an RTX card, you're probably not going to have any problem with the graphics at all. Uh, there's not a lot of granular choice in the graphics. It's definitely using DLSS, um, but there's just no option to choose if you want specific features on or off. So you've got low, medium, or high. And they generally seem to be m most concerned about things like the lighting and the ray tracing solution. Um, I would recommend playing it at whatever the game looks more comfortable at. It shouldn't be too difficult to get a lot 60 if you're on an RTX card. I can't comment on non-RTX cards, but I know you're going to have a bit more difficulty with that. Um, vertical sync for every frame is probably a priority because this game can get a bit disgusting if you don't leave that on. And then the bowel distortion kind of makes the screen bulge in the middle. Um, and then there's depth of field. Sometimes you will have to turn depth of field off when you're lining up things. Um, it's again down to personal preference. But this is not a game where it's going to be your graphics options that tank the game. It generally tends to be. Um, either glitches like objects getting outside of the map or too much destruction so bear that in mind um, and try and clear up your mess just until this has been patched up okay uh, that covers all the basics so i'll see you in the intermediate video